Hello everyone. I welcome you to this session where I want to talk about the syllabus of RBI 2023. Now there is a lot of difference between what RBI says and what RBI means. There's a lot of difference between what RBI has done in the past. Uh, by that I refer to the past syllabus and what RBI is demanding from you now. Before starting with the actual discussion about the syllabus, I want to share with you my own real life story. In 2012, I gave my first UPSC examination, my first UPSC attempt. I was fresh out of college. I had prepared very hard for UPSC in the past one year from 2011 to 12. And at that time, we used to have two papers in optionals. So I picked up commerce and public administration because there was a lot of overlap between these two subjects. I reached the interview stage, which was held somewhere in March or April of 20, uh, 2013. But by that time, we realized in 2013 that the syllabus has been completely reformed. And by that standards, this is only a very minuscule of change. In that year, the entire optional was removed and we now had only one optional. GS was completely changed. We now had much more to study in general studies. I completely changed the way I had to study. I had to study a lot of new subjects. I had to give up on entire public administration, which I had picked up in the past one year. I gave my 2013 and reached the interview stage again. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I could not clear. Even after re reaching the interview stage in 2013 as well, along with 2012. But that is something that I learned at that time period. That is, adaptation is the best method to change yourself when there is a change in the environment. You cannot change what has already been done by RBI. You cannot ask RBI to give you the old syllabus again. But what you can do in the next two to three months is adapt to the change, is understand how much effort is required and to smartly make that effort in order to achieve some kind of a distance between you and your competitor and clear the examination faster. With this, let me start with the discussion about the new syllabus of RBI. How is it different than the older syllabus? How different is, is it than the older syllabus? And how much effort will we need to tackle the change in the syllabus? Okay. If you have not taken the crash course, I would recommend that you enroll in it as fast as possible rather than wait for another 30 days and then enroll because by then a lot of crash course classes will be over and you would have missed out on a lot of things. Right now I am holding finance and management classes. ESI marathon is already done. With respect to the change that has happened, a lot more marathons are going to come in the near future in the next 10 days and you can take advantage and you can study all of that on time by enrolling in this crash course. Let us start with 2022 and let's compare it with 2023. I will be starting with phase two and then I'll move towards phase one. In economics and social issues, which is paper one in phase two, if you see, I have highlighted the areas that have been removed. Now, what are these areas? Positive discrimination in favor of underprivileged. This is one, which is basically the reservation policy that India has. Social movements, Indian political system, Human development, let me highlight this. Social sectors in India, health and education. Let me highlight this as well. Now, when you go to 2023, you will see that this entire sentence has been removed compared with 2022. Nothing new has been added. But what does it mean? What do we make out from this change? Number one, what do you still have to study and what you cannot give up? or ignore even now. Indian economy 1947 to 1991, you still have to study. Economic reforms which came in 1991, you still have to study that. Indian economy, I've divided in my syllabus into five parts. There is agriculture, industry, services, external sector, banking. Indian economy from 1991 to 2022, you still have to study this. Sustainable development and human development. Now. You might say, sir, human development is not a part of the syllabus anymore. It says human development here in 2022, which is not there in 23. But sustainable development, human development, 
development versus growth, this entire thing goes together and therefore you cannot ignore it and it is still very much a part of the syllabus, not directly said by RBI, but this is something which is implied. So I would request that you do not ignore human development. It is a very important linking pin between economic growth and development and it cannot be ignored. Okay. Social issues. Now, social issues, may a lot of students are saying, sir, education is not there anymore, health is not there anymore. But I would still recommend that you cover them. Why? The reason is very simple. Because social issues like poverty are still a part of the syllabus. Social issues like urbanization, migration, population are still a part of the syllabus. And these are directly connected. These are directly connected with education and health. Therefore, you you can reduce the amount of effort that you put in education and development, education and health or various other social issues, but you cannot ignore them completely. You still have to have some basic idea about these topics. Okay. Similarly, gender issues is still a part of the, uh, you know, social issues, still a part of the syllabus. Therefore, majority of the social issues are still a part of the syllabus. Okay. All government schemes, a lot of students are asking, sir, can we skip government schemes on education and health? I would not recommend. This is an examination which happens once a year. If you've already covered them in the past, why take that risk of not covering them now? You should cover schemes related to education and health also. Now, why do I say this? Because right now, majority of the schemes work in an integrated manner with various other schemes. MG Narega does not work in silo anymore. It works with direct benefit transfer, it works with PM Janthan as well, it works with various other schemes uh, directly or indirectly. And the same goes with a lot of schemes about education and health as well. Therefore, I would recommend not to take that shortcut because just, just because RBI has removed that part of the syllabus from its uh, new notification, but to be more holistically prepared, it is going to give you some benefit, not any disadvantage. Okay. What is not to be studied? This is something that you can completely skip now. If you studied it in the past, you need not revise it anymore. Number one, social movements. We've studied a lot of social movements. There used to be a lot of questions because this is something, but this is something which is, which stands alone, which is not directly connected with everything else that happens in Indian economy. So you can skip it. Positive discrimination, reservation policy of India, a very specific topic that stands silo, that stands alone. Therefore, you can skip it. Indian polity, there used to be a lot of discussion about it. Every year, one question would come from Indian polity. Uh, I think it's called as political uh, development or something like that in the syllabus. Let me have a look at the older syllabus. It used to say Indian political system. Now, it is not a part of the syllabus anymore. Uh, typically, we used to have question, one question from Indian polity, but we never taught it because Indian polity is very heavy subject. It requires almost 100 hours of teaching. And to get just one question from that makes no sense. Fortunately, it has now been removed. So you will not be getting one question from Indian polity anymore. I hope this is clear about ESI, economic and social issues. Let's come to finance and management. I'll start with finance, then we'll go towards management. The finance syllabus has been divided into three parts. One is financial system, then financial markets, and then you have the third part. If you talk about financial system, there are changes. There are no changes in the first three points. Point number one, two, three almost remain the same. The wording might have changed, but they still mean the same. So whatever you've studied in finance in the past six months, three months, two months, one month, whatever, you still have to do the same. No change required. Point number four, five, six, seven. These are the new points that have been included. Okay, we'll talk about this and there's, there's no change in financial markets. It's exactly the same. Now, when we compare these two, what do we figure out? What do we get? Point number one, two, three, only change in words. The meaning remains same. Therefore, your preparation need not change at all. Point number four. Now, this has been made more broad. It used to be more specific in nature. And RBI realized that it cannot be so specific when it's asking questions related to uh, Indian financial system, regulatory bodies, the entire banking system in capital markets. And therefore, now this has been made more broad. What does it mean for you as a student? Your preparation also now needs to be more broad. The questions can be not so specific anymore. They can be more generalized, more broad. Uh, basically, what I'm saying is anything under the sun, uh, 
related to Indian financial system, Indian capital markets, Indian banking system can be asked. This is where RBI 247 is going to gain a lot of relevance for you as a student. Now, we have been doing it consistently for the past one year, no matter what the exam date is, what the exam date is not. And therefore, you should also be very thorough with RBI 247. It's going to help you a lot in this. 2007 to 2023, financial landscape and financial innovations. Now, in the older syllabus, you saw that uh, they only said impact of global financial crisis of 2007-8 and Indian response. Now, this is very specific. What have they done instead? They now say recent developments in global financial system and its impact on Indian financial system. Now, this is more broad because we're talking about recent developments and I'm relating it to 2022 syllabus, which starts with 2007-8 global financial crisis. So anything happening between 2007-8 in the global as well as Indian financial system and 2023, 2007, 2008 and 2023. Now this holds a lot more importance. There can be questions around this as well. Okay. Financial landscape, financial innovations happening in this time period are going to be very relevant. Again, RBA 247 is going to be the most important document here because when you study a newspaper, when we study reports given by RBI and we create summaries and give it to you, we're not just covering what happens, what happens today or what is going to happen tomorrow. They're also talking about us, how is it different than what has been happening in the past 10 years or what is our experience in the past 10 years, 15 years. There's a lot of discussion around that even in newspapers. And all of that is covered in this document as well as the videos created here as well. Okay, so the financial landscape, financial innovations between 2007 to 2023, they are going to be relevant now. Point number five to point number seven, what do they mean when uh, we compare between 2022 and 23? 2022 mein to kuch thai nahi. 23 mein, this is same as before, which means uh, although it is not mentioned in 2022, but non-banking system development in digital payments, but it was already implied in 2022 syllabus. For example, non-banking system is what? Non-banking system is basically NBFCs or NBFIs, non-banking financial institutions in total. Now, we've already talked about non-banking financial institutions, which are bigger than NBFCs in the syllabus as well. I've taught you this. So this is an area which they can focus upon. Role of IT in banking and finance, basically fintech development in digital payments, also fintech as well as uh, uh, BPSS and various other things that have been done by RBI. Uh, specific to digital domain. Now, these all we've already taught. We might have to go into much more detail and depth about digital payments and digital system uh, and its connection with the banking system. Fortunately, again, this is where RBI 247 is going to be very relevant because you cannot find this anywhere other than the newspapers. This is where the newspapers come in. They hold utmost importance. Even today, there was news about digital system, digital payments, digital frauds. So all those things cannot be learned through RBI website as well because they are not so fast in coming out with uh, documents and coming out with research papers about the same, but the newspapers are much more active, okay? Especially financial newspapers. When we come to point number B, which is financial markets, there is no change. So you need not worry about this at all. Now we have discussed all this, I have given you knowledge, what does it mean? What exactly do you need to do? You might be thinking about this. You need not do anything specifically extra. The only thing that you need to do is focus more on number one, RBI 247. Okay, this is going to be the most important and the game changer in this examination. Okay, at the same time, your preparation needs to be more holistic when it comes to the syllabus part. You need, you cannot anymore say only NBFCs is mentioned, so I'm not going to cover NBFIs. Now okay, that cannot be done because the syllabus is becoming more and more broad. It is becoming more general so that they can ask questions from other areas as well. They need not stick to only NBFCs. They need not stick to only financial technologies. They can talk about other technologies which have an impact on banking and capital markets as well. 
okay that is how they are making it more broad so your understanding of the syllabus has to be more holistic these are the only two things that you have to do you need not study too much you just need to be more aware that can be done through rba 247 and through a more comprehensive study of the syllabus let's come to the third portion which is general topics we'll compare 2022 with 2023 In 2022, we used to have this topic, role of e-governance in addressing corruption and inefficiency. यहाँ से questions भी नहीं आते थे और हम लोग पढ़ाते भी नहीं थे, students पढ़ते भी नहीं थे, because governance was also included in management portion, and this was just a repetition of the same. And RBI felt that it makes more sense for them to ask questions in the management paper from governance and e-governance rather than under finance. Okay. Although both the papers are held together, <coughs> but even then, they felt that it fits more in management rather than finance. So the questions were like that. This has now been removed because this is not very relevant for RBI for an institution like RBI. It's a technocratic organization, therefore it does not matter much and align with the purpose with which they are hiring you, they're testing you. And the next change that we have is fintech. The word has been removed, but now we have. seen a new point 7 which says uh let us come to that developments in digital payments as well as the role of it in banking and finance so point number 5 and point number 7 basically are more broader and general understanding of fintech that is what they are talking about so fintech being a specific topic they did not have a lot of scope to ask questions now they have much higher scope we can expect some more questions again RBI 247 is going to play a very very major role when tackling questions from fintech or digital payments what has been added in general topics now this is something which is very scary for a lot of students basics of accounting and financial statements balance sheet pnl cash flow statements ratio analysis now you might be feeling that this is something completely new but it is not because it used to be a part of the syllabus about 4 years back they changed the syllabus or they changed the pattern with which they were asking and they stopped asking questions from this area but now i feel that they realize how important is this area in the next one or two years they might have questions for on financial management as well now financial management is a altogether different area of study different subject that is core to finance that is still not a part of the syllabus but it might be but for now we have accounting and uh, basics of financial statements as a part of the syllabus yet again okay how difficult is it how do you cover it let me talk about that as well now harneet sir has been uh, with us and has been the top faculty for accounting uh, when he teaches accounting then there is no question of any student not being able to understand it i've tested it enough in upsc we've tested tested it enough and he's tested it himself in sebi in ifsca and even in upsc apfc examination and this is something that you cannot learn overnight accounting is a very big very large uh, subject which takes an entire lifetime for a lot of people chartered accountants they spend their entire life learning about accounting this is where expertise comes in okay if i tell you tomorrow no i am going to teach you accounting and i have not studied accounting in such detail in the past one year or two year i might not be able to do justice with the subject but harneet sir who specializes in this area is going to do that for you okay so what i am going to do is we are going to have two or three marathon sessions longer marathon sessions five to six hours each designed for the enrolled students wherein in these two three days you can at least have a basic understanding about accounts and then you can keep revising it again and again and again by the end of two to three revisions two to three cycles you would have gained more confidence in accounting okay that is what you have to do the advantage with accounting is if you read it well there is no way that you are not going to score well if you read it well you will be able to score high because there are no gray areas in accounting it is more towards black and white if you know something you know it and you can get to the answer if you don't have conceptual clarity about something there is there's there's no way you will going to get to the answer therefore for students who are more sincere and who are more positive in their approach about accounting they're certainly going to do well 
इफ यू आर अ स्टूडेंट हु स्केर्ड अबाउट इट थिंकिंग अभी ज्यादा पढ़ना पड़ेगा अभी इतना ही था अभी कैसे हो पाएगा इफ ऑल दीज काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन यू आर आस्किंग फॉर फ्रॉम योर सेल्फ देन यू माइट फेस डिफिकल्टीज है ओके अप्रोच एंड एटीट्यूड इज गोट मैटर अ लॉट वेन इट कम्स टू अकाउंटिंग स्पेसिफिकली as i said e governance corruption has been removed so not important any more and it was not important anyways in the past as well to wahan pe aapko zyada kuch advantage mil nahi raha hai to be very honest let's come to management now management mein there has been no change at all uh, in management what are we doing we are focusing upon when we talk about fundamentals of management and organization behavior this is all about principles of management so there are a total of two to three subjects which are being covered here number one principles of management number two from here till here you are studying organization behavior now this is another subject that is taught in management okay so if you are studying on your own this is how you divide your preparation classify your prep principles of management from here to here you have to study and from the second para to the third end of third para organization behavior is what you have to study okay the third portion is ethics and corporate governance this is something that they added last year and i'm very glad that they did because this also talks about and and you know clarifies their intention of uh, you know checking whatever they want to check and this gives us more clarity as to what are they looking for so one of the aspects that they're looking for simultaneously is how ethical you are in your real life how idealistic you are in your decision making along with practicality if tomorrow you are in in a place of discretion in a place of decision making how ethical and how corruption less your decisions are going to be is it going to be more important for you to make decisions based upon your self interest or based upon what is good for the organization that you're working in what is good for the community that you're working for as rbi's notification also says that you're not working only for yourself this is not just a job you're serving the nation and believing that they've inculcated this last year and it's a beautiful subject shubham sir has taught majority of this corporate governance as well as ethics he has a phd in governance so to say and therefore i believe there can be no better person to teach you something like ethics or governance or corporate governance than shubham sir you already covered this you can very well check it in the course as well no need to study more than whatever shubham sir has taught that is good enough and fortunately there has been no change in the syllabus when it comes to the third portion okay now let me come to the phase 1 part what are the changes if there are any if there are not no changes then what do you need to do in the next 60 days and how do you take forward your studies I also want to talk about a video that I created yesterday which was about how do you prepare in the next 60 days. I did not want to talk about the change in syllabus because I felt that there's a lot of panic and therefore it is very important that we scientifically analyze the change in syllabus, adapt to the change. That is very important, adapt to the change so that we are able to function properly in the next 60 days. Okay? So whatever changes we have discussed so far you need to inculcate these changes in the strategy that i discussed with you yesterday okay let's come to current affairs now there are still four parts to current affairs that i divided in spotlight 3 to 6 months pib 247 6 to 12 months rbi 247 6 to 12 months i would recommend you to cover it for at least 8 months and not 6 months anymore because the importance as i said of rbi 247 has increased and topic based current affairs which includes government schemes economic survey budget Uh, which includes uh, finance commission uh, census 2011 if there is any document any news about census 2021 any data which comes up before the exam then that as well periodic labor force survey health census all these things are important here and there is no change now very important point you need to cover all these four things before phase 1 and the timetable that i shared yesterday also said the same before phase 1 not after phase 1 okay so there's no change here current affairs follow the same approach when we come to quant and reasoning what all should we focus upon in the next two months quant can be divided into three uh, three to uh, four parts the first one is arithmetic then we have quadratic which is just one topic 
number series, data interpretation, mensuration, probability. Now, when we talk about, now what have I done is, all the important topics I've highlighted in green, all the unimportant topics, topics that you can skip or topics that you should be attempting last, I've highlighted in blue. And the other topics are the ones which depend upon your comfort. For some students, quadratic is easier. For some students, quadratic is very difficult. So it depends upon your understanding and your comfort with the subject, with the topic. Arithmetic says start karte hai. when we talk about arithmetic, profit and loss, time and work, time speed distance, compound interest, simple interest, ratio proportion, mixture allegation, averages, partnership, percentage, ages, boats and streams, pipes and systems, approximation, simplification. Broadly, these are the tap topics from where you will see questions in the examination. Okay. Out of these, the green ones are the ones where you can score higher or the questions are comparatively easier or we can say more logical. Therefore, it becomes easier for you to answer them even if you don't remember the formula or you can not reach the answer through the formula. You can still apply logic and conclude. Profit and loss, time and work, time speed distance, averages, partnership, percentage, ages, boats and streams. These are the areas. Other than this, quadratic is something that a lot of students find very easy, a lot of students find very difficult. Therefore, it depends upon your understanding and your comfort. Number series, DI, data interpretation, highlighted in green, very, very relevant, very important, practice it a lot. It is going to play a major role in your exam. Mensuration, probability, permutation, combination, highlighted in blue, which means not so important. Last In the last two years, we have seen that there has been one or two odd questions from this area. There might be more questions. So what do you do is, you just go through the formulas under mensuration, probability, permutation, combination. Because the questions have been comparatively easier in these three areas, even if you're thorough with the formulas, you should be able to uh, answer some questions, if, even if there are more questions from this area. Okay, so don't skip it altogether. Cover it briefly, only cover the formulas. When we come to reasoning, then the green ones are the important areas that you can, that can, that can help you score. And the blue one, one blue one is the area where you can actually falter. Inequality, directions, blood relations, input output, alphabet, test and numeric numerics, critical reasoning, which includes assumptions, arguments, conclusions and various other critical reasoning questions. Majority of the questions out of the 60 questions in reasoning come from critical reasoning. Therefore, very important that you're thorough with it. A lot of questions come from inequality, direction, blood relation, input output, alphabet tests as well. So cover it well. The reason I have not highlighted syllogism is I find it easy, but I've seen a lot of students falter in syllogism. They find it difficult. Therefore, again, it's dependent upon your comfort. If, you, if you're able to use that logic and if it comes to you naturally, score well in syllogism, you will easily get four to five questions. Puzzles is something that I would recommend that you practice well, but at the same time, be sure that you attempt puzzle questions at last in reasoning, once you're done with all the other questions. At the same time, do not spend a lot of time in practicing puzzles, probably four to five puzzles every day or about 30 minutes of practice of puzzles when you're preparing for reasoning, not more than that. Start identifying, instead focus on identifying which puzzle is easier to solve, which puzzle is difficult to solve. Okay, start working through that. If you're able to figure out which one is doable, which one is not doable, it will be very easy for you to find out that one or two puzzles out of five puzzles that you'll get in the examination that are solvable. And that is what they're looking at when they're talking about puzzles, when they're giving you puzzles. The three to four puzzles that they give you are not solvable at all. Even if a mathematician would have, would be sitting and solving that, he would also take 15 to 20 minutes for one puzzle. That is the amount of time that that puzzle is expected to take. We have to respect that. And therefore, what they're checking is how smart you are in leaving out that puzzle and picking up another one which is easier. Okay, that is their focus. That is what they're looking at. So this is all about the syllabus, what RBI has given and what is it looking for through the change in syllabus, how you have to cover it, how I will be covering it over the next uh, 30 to 60 days, what all changes I will be bringing out through marathon sessions, the relevance of RBI 247, accounting to be covered by Harneet sir, 
and uh, how you can use the course to prepare well as well as to clear the examination. Okay. If you have any questions, you can very well ask me in the comment section below. You can also reach out to me on my number. I believe the number should be, it's not on the screen. It's here. So you can just note down the number double nine double nine four double six double two five. You can also email on info at anujindal.in or you can just go to the website www.anujindal.in. So that's all for today. I hope to see you again and we will start with our preparations once again with full flow. And I'm very, very certain that you will follow the marathon sessions that are going on and they are helping you in your preparation. All the best guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.